All right, this is a full walkthrough of how you can create an e-learning interaction and articulate storyline. Interactions is a great way to increase learner engagement in e-learning. When I design a slide, one of the first things I do is to go to freepick.com or any other graphic resource site to get your inspiration. For me, I go to freepick.com to get my design ideas for the interaction. A big chunk of your time will be spent figuring out what design goes with your particular content. After you have picked the design that you like, make a screenshot and paste it into your storyline canvas. Now adjust the screenshot, stretch it out by dragging the corner all the way to the end of the slide so that it fits the entire slide. Change the opacity of that so it looks a bit more transparent. Do this by going to format shape, picture and transparency and adjust the setting. Then using shapes, lines, and text and storyline, copy the design into the slide. This will take some time. You can go to flaticon.com to find relevant icons for your interaction. Whenever you have an interaction in e-learning, it's always beneficial to have the text instructions on the screen. We want to group the text, icons, and the shape as one object so that the learner can click any one of those items to show the pop-up. In this interaction, these shapes will pop up a new layer to mimic a light box. Okay, we go back to freepick.com and browse around for a pop-up layer design. Finding the right design can be very time consuming. For me, I spend a significant amount of time trying to find out what design to implement. Here, I pick this one. Copy over the design, then start replicating the shape. Before we do that, create a rectangle shape. Cover the slide. And change the color to the one that we got from the screenshot and change the opacity so that we can see some of the base layer. Adding a drop shadow here. Adding some text and design wise, it's good to have the heading text to be bigger and bolder than the content text. Since this is a mock slide, I'm pasting in random text. Then, I'm back at flaticon.com to find some icons to use. Drag it over, then adjust the alignment. Now I'm creating the button that will take you back to the base layer. Earlier we created blank layers. What we're going to do is we're going to delete those and duplicate the layer we just created with all of the shapes. This will speed up the process. Now all we need to do is change the color of the background and change the text and even the icons. We don't have to create everything from scratch. 
Now let's create the triggers. Click on the grouped object. On the actions, you want to show layer, whichever layer is step one when the user clicks. Then you create the trigger for step two and the same for step three. Let's go over the layer and create a trigger for the continue button. For this trigger, you want to set the button to hide the layer when the user clicks. Do the same thing for step two and three. Quickly preview and see if it works. The step we're about to do here is not mandatory, but a nice to have. We're going to create visited states so that the button color changes when they visit the layer. Here, click on the actual rectangle and not the entire group. Go over to the states tab next to the timeline tab and duplicate it. On the drop down, choose visited and change the color to gray. Then do the same thing for the other two rectangles. Then you want to preview to make sure that it works. At this point, you're pretty much done. You can end it here if you like. The next step we're going to do is another nice to have to help the learner. We're going to create a little call out box to let the user know to click the next button after they have finished the interaction. Create a rectangle and change the text to continue. Then change the state to hidden. Then we're going to create a trigger where the action is changing the state to normal when the state of all clickable rectangles is set to visit it. Then test it out. Just when you think we're done, we can do even more. We're going to add entrance animations to these objects so that they have motion when you enter the slide. Click on the objects and add any entrance animation you like. Once you add the entrance animations, we're going to time it so that they come in one after another. You do this by going to the timeline and adjusting the length of those layers as you can see here. Looks like it's completely done, but you could do even more. If you look at the background of the sample image here that we replicated, you notice that there's a faint background image. This is what we're going to do. Go to freepick.com and search for whatever relevant term for your module. Find an image you like and download it. And drop the image to your background. I didn't do it here, but I recommend resizing your image so that the file size is not so huge. There are lots of free resizing programs out there. Change the transparency and send it to behind all your objects. And now we are completely done. Great job if you're able to follow along and complete this interaction. If you have any questions, ask away in the comments.